When I first started sugardetox.me, the, the website, um, you know, it was a real personal journey for me. It was, I, I had to like look at myself and I'm like, okay, what's gonna keep me like honest, committed and on course? Like I really wanna design a program for me. But pretty soon after, it wasn't about me any longer. You know, as people started to write in and say, oh my God, this is like really helpful or do you have your step-by-step -step process? I was like, okay, well, let me test this out and see if this actually works for other people other than me. And so I started to bring more people on board to, to test this and to see if it works and to, to really cater it to other folks. And, and that's how the book was born. You know, that was, that was part of my mission is to get this information out because, you know, so much of what we do is a reactive approach to our health. But I, I really fully believe that we have everything that we need in order to be healthy individuals. We just might not have enough information or know how to change our behaviors. So sugardetox.me is that, and sugardetox.me, the cookbook and guide is really my approach in order to be able to help people do this for themselves very easily and very simply. For anybody who picks up Sugar Detox Me, a, a reader will find over a hundred recipes that are sugar free. So really removing all sweetness. So these are free sugars, which are sugars not bound by fiber and also a guide. So, you know, you might be the person who just jumps in and wants to start cooking, but I also encourage people to actually read what the third of a book is, is the guide. And if you really wanna logically understand what's happening in your body, if you wanna understand like what's happening with my, my own experiences, then I think that's um, a marvelous way to start because then it puts the recipes that you're creating into context of why you're actually doing the cleanse yourself. One of the top tips that I tell people, whether they're reading the book or whether they go on the website or anything like that, is that the easiest thing you could do is to remove sugars out of the stuff that you drink. And I'm talking about like sodas, juices, it might be too much sugar in your morning coffee or cappuccino, uh, it might be honey in your tea. On average, half of the sugar that we're taking into our bodies are coming from what we drink and our brain just doesn't even catch up with it. You know, it takes our brain around 20 minutes to even say that we're full. And when I ask people where digestion takes place, they often say, oh yeah, in, in my stomach. And that's totally valid to be able to think that, but really digestion happens in our mouth and arguably even our minds. As soon as we start to think about something, if we're hungry and we start to think about it, our brain is getting primed. But when you're just drinking your sugar, your brain doesn't even recognize it. And because we've removed all that healthy fiber from that fruit or that vegetable, and all of a sudden we turned it into a juice or smoothie, or if we're just having like liquid sugar in our sodas, these are things that don't serve us well. And you know, I, I, I say some things that some people are like, really, we don't need sugar, but your body doesn't need any sugar in order to be healthy. And the recommended limits that we often read are the recommended upper limits. And people are exceeding on average two to four times the amount of those recommended upper limits. One of the great things that I've learned in doing the, the sugar detox is just all the benefits that it gives you. And you know, for me, as I went through the process, I realized like I wasn't truly addicted to sugar. I had some symptoms that made me reliant on it. And um, I now feel like I really have gotten a handle on sugar intake. And, and when I say sugar intake, it's free sugars, which are sugars not bound by fiber. So this could be honey, it could be table sugar, it could be agave nectar. And it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy a dessert once in a while, but when you find that you remove it, you find that your taste buds completely reacclimate. And you have to give yourself time for this. But all of a sudden, those like tomatoes or that watermelon all of a sudden has this vibrant flavor that you hadn't tasted before because you were using this hyper stimulus to totally dull out your, your taste receptors. And then after that, your skin clears up. That was like one of the first things that my, my uncle actually had gone home for July 4th, which was like a big gathering for my family. And the first thing he said to me is like, your skin is glowing. And I, I hadn't recognized it because you know, you live with yourself every day and you don't, you don't recognize the difference from day to day, but he hadn't seen me in six months. And that was, you know, that was the biggest thing that I was doing. I lost a little bit of weight, wasn't even trying for that. 
And um, you know, for people who are pre-diabetic, this is the way for them to actually you know, revert their blood sugar back by reducing their sugar intake in their bodies. A lot of folks say that their, their fogginess, their brain fog clears out. They don't hit slumps in the middle of the day because their, their blood sugar is much more natural. It's not like they're on a roller coaster. Um, just like being able to think, being a little bit sharper on your feet. These are things that just naturally come when you're reducing, when you stop feeding yourself things that aren't nutritious. And at the end of the day, sugar is not nutritious and you absolutely don't need it because your body can produce all the energy it needs from the good food that you're eating.